fine joke Know all there is to know From masterpieces to deep fried tacos And if the movie sucks You might hear them say There's no telling where the guys will take you Get ready for a spoiler Won't say it twice Cause we're all Broadcasting from the lush but not lavish studios located in the basement of the O'Keefe Institute for Advanced Film Snarkitude, this is Real Spoilers, episode 756, Iron Man meets the greatest American hero. <laughs> Iron Man meets the Giver. You yeah. lied about our location, though. Oh, that's right. We are, <laughs> I forgot. We're broadcasting from multiple undisclosed <laughs> locations, although technically... By lying, I'm not disclosing them, see? which means I'm telling the truth. Ah, circus. I see that, that's, some, that's some fancy footwork there, Tom. Yes, gonna, it is. Yeah, that was pretty good. And, good lawyer in. And I, I am in the <laughs> that's true. basement of the O'Keefe Institute for Advanced Films Market. Kevin, Sorry, you're too. in the bunker. Yeah, radioactive. Yeah. I'm feeling it. I'm just so, at home. Joe's in the only place not cool enough to get a nickname. The south side of St. Louis. Joe's in the cat room, <laughs> yeah. apparently. He's yeah. just running around like a dog. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> So I guess before we dig in proper, we should all go around the table and introduce ourselves. Or this is virtual table, excuse me. <laughs> this is Joe. <laughs> this is Kevin. And this is Tom. We should say we're we're recording, we're trying Squadcasts. We've never used Squadcasts before, so we'll see if that works. But we're doing that because Kevin's feeling sickly. He's got his special time, and he <laughs> didn't want to come in to the office. Hey, <laughs> I'm just trying to be nice and not get anyone sick. He, so, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't want us all to sync up. Yes. <laughs> so uh, goodness. So we are we are dispersed. Yeah. But but also while we're here, let's do some shameless plugs. Don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, iHeart, TuneIn, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us. While you're there, be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review, which is super helpful. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash real spoilers. While you're there, like the page join the group you can get a little bit more engagement in the group than the page that's for sure yeah we call the group the league of show sharers because we're hoping you will share an episode with your friends and or loved ones and maybe and enemies remember we don't sure we we don't don't leave anyone out yeah Yeah. maybe if you like it they'll like it so people who were kind enough to share an episode last week include travis tewitt brendan mcguckin gabriel lugo ralph tribble jason mclean tammy lynn powers betts chris magic man julian jordan Richard Kortzer, Glenn Cougar Mellenbrewer, Tom Dowdy, Chris Valls, Phil Tymon, Tyler Ward, Heather Sachs, Dissect That Film, Christopher Rex, Invasion of the Remake, Ronnie Castle, The Real Pete, Mike Mike and Oscar, <laughs> In Session Film, Geek to Me Radio, Binge Movies, Batman Rye Guy, Feel and Film, Ryan Terry, and the Nostalgia Cast. So thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. And also don't forget, we have a Patreon, patreon.com. Slash real spoilers, where for five bucks a month you get all sorts of bonus content, and we like you extra a bit. And and we also finally have a YouTube channel that you can find, oddly enough, on YouTube. And it's weird how that works. If Squadcast <laughs> works, you will be seeing <laughs> us there, <laughs> or you might just hear our voices again. We yes. Or you might see like a uh, stock stock photos. Yes. Under you know what? We'll just we'll just put up the movie Blue Beetle. This will be our commentary track over the movie. They won't care. Yes. I, I'm a little sad and disappointed that no one commented on Justin's photo from when he left at the end of the Turtles episode. Oh, what did you do? Well, they oh, have to go I guess watch fair. our YouTube video to find out, that's but it. no one's commented. So, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you will not be able to use this as the commentary for the Blue Beetle movie because that is two hours and seven minutes and there is no way we are talking about this movie no, it's for not, two hours no, and seven minutes. No, no, like, no, no. So, and I will say, I don't think this is a bad movie. It I is, totally agree with you. It is a very mediocre movie. I think if you approach it as a family film, sure, it's, it's solid. 
uh, although I saw a couple kids now the theater wasn't that full but there were a couple families with their kids and about 45 50 minutes in I'm going what are these kids doing they have to be bored to death by this movie yeah nothing happens or, for the first or hour absolutely terrified because the the sequence when when Jaime gets the scarab and it gets on him <laughs> that is like that was something the, out of a horror movie. That was that was the first time I go, oh, something. <laughs> yeah, like seriously, like the transformation and stuff. I was like, okay, now that was we're like, cooking. That was like a Cronenberg film. It, <laughs> yeah, oh my it, god, it was, it was, it was great. crazy. I'm like, it was it was really cool. But man, this movie, it, it's okay, it's okay. But I think the writing is really poor. I think it's. I think we've seen it, it's just so generic it is with very the, generic. the the beats of the story. I think that it cribs a lot from like Spider Man. It felt a lot like a Spider Man origin movie, like the Raimi Spider Man. And it's just it just took so long to get going. And I, I but really so so did the first Spider Man. But I'll tell you what though, maybe it's because of Raimi and being an auteur and it was interesting right. to look or, at. But I, this Spider Man did not drag like this movie dragged. Or is it because we know Spider Man? We know yeah. who Peter Parker is. We know who Aunt May is. We know who Mary Jane is. We know all of that stuff. Where I do feel like with this one, um, although I would say, if anything, that should work against Spider Man, right? Like, sure. Like, I I know the story. Get yeah, get, get to it. Get right? to it. Right. And this should be interesting because not as many people know Blue Beetle, but I just I, there's something about it. Like this movie made me think of Spider Man, but the new one where I go, let's just introduce superheroes because the origin story hour long backstory is getting really bogged down I think, and, and most origin stories are variations on a theme like the same thing they're <laughs> yeah. pretty similar right, right, oh right. i got these powers i don't understand how do i you know it's like yeah it's but also like i went into a lab and yeah. i got this thing that is a bug that gave me powers that i let like it just this feels very much and it, like it was secretly given to me by the person who will be the villain of this movie right yeah right, right, right. It, yeah, it, like it, it felt the beats of it felt a lot like spider-man which isn't the doesn't have to be a bad the blue hey. beats of it. yeah <laughs> look at you, so, look uh, at you. <laughs> yeah i just i wish i want this movie to work and i wish it did better and I wish it was better because the representation's important. I love the cultural stuff. I think it's really cool to see that instead of seeing the same settings you see over and over, right? Like it's not set in New York. It's not set. Well, that's it, actually it's... interesting because the, the the Jaime Reyes story takes place in El Paso, Texas. So I do find it like in the comics, at least. Yeah. So I do find it interesting that they have made up. You know, DC is notorious for not taking place in the real world, right? Keystone, mm -hmm. Central City, Metropolis, Gotham. Where, again, with this one, they take it out of the real world, which is where it's set in the comics, and then make up some fictional... I, I don't even know what where this is supposed to be. I How thought city. I thought it was supposed to be Florida because they kept talking about the keys. Do other states oh. have keys? I honestly don't know. Like that's maybe good... Texas does. It's on the ocean. Yeah, that's Palmera true. City is a city in Texas, so it's still in Texas, okay. but it's a it's a kind of a made up. But I liked that they took it closer to. I mean, you because obviously you have all the Hispanic influence, and you've got you know just a different setting than we're always seeing New York and you know at least in yeah. the you know or variations of New York Chicago etc so again i like the representation i liked the setting and all the cultural stuff i liked the family element i thought that was fun but it did I didn't also like that at all. Well, no, no I, I thought that, the idea i thought I the like family the idea was of... terrible. They're, yeah, they're... like i it was too big. Like they were yeah. I mean, I know that the, they were supposed to be the comedic element and but like it just almost never made me laugh. It, I and, think I think giving him the writing. Yeah, yeah. and I also the, the whole grandma thing at the end where it's just like what okay. Like I, this is, I think the I think the grandma thing is good, but the movie's so tonally mismatched. I can't tell because Blue Beetle doesn't kill, but my family is a bunch of crazy murderers. <laughs> right. Like, right. Grandma has a machine gun and is gunning people down. What kind of message are you trying to send? Like, there are ways that you could impart those virtues without, like, mixing the message up so much. Like, I get that they aren't him, but you still shouldn't have his family mowing people down well, maybe and the, taking I mean, those, bug legs those, those, through people's that, chests. That one was crazy. Well, the, well I yeah. mean, the, the movie ends with, I mean, the, it's it's it's... The, it resolves its its villain story with a murder suicide. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. It, but, it, but, it's but, very okay, but in strange. That, in, that at least Jaime didn't drag 
Susan Sarandon into the fire. It was the guy who was like ripped apart and put back together. Yeah, but it's still but like I agree with this you. This is basically a family movie <laughs> yes. that resolves yeah. its plot with a murder. I was suicide. actually I was trying to look up this director because I do think he has a cert like a, a good look. Like I like the way the movie looked for the most part with. When you get to like the, the this city, this movie, this movie was filmed like an episode of Power Rangers. Well, okay, but remember, this, this was like spo- this was supposed to, to be HBO Max. Yeah, this was supposed to be a straight to HBO Max. So, I, I like do, Peacemaker, uh, it looks like a film. Well, it's it, it depends on the director, right? I like, know, but you see what I'm saying? Like, we can't just we can't just pigeonhole that, right? Like, you've got Netflix movies that have a 200 million dollar budget and win Oscars too that are streaming yeah. movies. So I just I don't want to lump streaming movies into this category of oh it's streaming so it doesn't have to look good like no i don't, I don't think in, that's not what you know I, don't, I agree with you it's not what i'm, I'm just saying like the, i think that maybe there are certain things that were filmed that i feel like maybe he knew that it was going to be on a tv rather than a big screen yeah so there there's probably some sort of you and know this look. had a hundred million dollar budget so it yeah. was not nothing it's still a ton yeah yeah I yeah mean, i just i when i was watching i almost i you know i would never text at the alamo of course that's you know <laughs> big big no no yeah Godzilla but i wanted your face off i wanted to text tom because i knew he had already seen it and be like this movie is looks like an episode of power rangers it's <laughs> it's so uninteresting to look at we talked about Raimi. i think that's the perfect example Raimi's not tour when you see a Raimi movie it looks like a Raimi movie it's interesting he has a style this movie is so generic not only the plot but by the look of it that you just there's not much to grab onto because the action doesn't get going until an hour in so you're just hoping hoping that something's going to come along and pique your interest this does feel like they are they being warner brothers and I'm not going to throw James Gunn under the bus with this one. I this one's not on him, right? Like he he. No, people are yeah. like, this is the first in the James. It's like no, no it is no. released while he's in he charge. Said, he had he nothing said that, to do with it. That Blue Beetle is going to be part of his DCU, but this yeah. is not. You know, his and producing I will partner say, is I, the producer of this. Yeah, so. I will say, even though I was lukewarm on this movie, I I hope they keep Blue Beetle. Mm-hmm. He's great. I like because him a lot. I I liked him mm-hmm. and he's great and. And I like enjoyed the character. I just feel like if it had better writing behind it. Yes. And, but but yeah, I, I certainly hope because clearly this thing's underperforming. What's it on pace to make like fifteen million dollars this weekend or That's something? That's twenty tw- twenty five twenty twenty five. Million. Okay. Yeah. But but I did like this character. I think just just because this movie underperforms and I'm lukewarm on it, I still think this character can work in the larger DC. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I hope they keep it. He's this I mean, actor. He, his name is Zolo Maraduena, yeah, I think is how you pronounce it. Cobra Kai. He's in Cobra Kai. He's on Cobra Kai. That's where anybody's going to know him. Uh, <laughs> if, if you go to Alamo, you'll see he was in a lot of commercials before <laughs> he got he's acting a lot. <laughs> yeah. I think he's very charismatic. I think he has it. He's a very talented and very charismatic actor. I liked him a lot. So he is a shining point. If he weren't in it, if there were a weaker leading actor for I sure this, this movie would just be terrible yeah yeah like as tepid as i am on this movie yeah. if you swap him out for somebody else this movie like yeah. immediately yeah. goes in the toilet this is, this look, is a five million dollar movie yeah. yeah but i mean but you know every time that he smiles or just says his lines with this type of energy you you immediately are picked up you're like oh man i like this guy and it's a shame that the script wasn't better because the the writing just felt so cheesy okay Susan Sarandon is terrible in this she movie. She is phoning it in. I, she was she get I, I she she was phoning it in so much. I I'm afraid she might have aphasia. I'm like, is that what's going? Is that what's oh. going on? <laughs> but I mean, terrible villains. Both the villains are bland and generic. We've seen it I can, all before. I can I can forgive the 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 muscle right. Like I can forgive the muscle being bland and generic. He's just there for the fighting. That's fine. But but, I, it, but you do fine, need but... someone else, right? And you're totally right. And it's funny how a lot of these movies have gone back, even the Marvel stuff, have gone back to actors of our past and given them, a, you know, here's a little paycheck. Here's, you know, yeah, some, Robert some, Redford. That was Amazing. the first one I was thinking of. Robert yeah. Redford, yeah. Ben Kingsley, you know, all of these guys who and none of them felt like they were phoning it in. No, because they had I, good material. Michael Douglas, they, Michelle well, Pfeiffer. Two, two, I think there's two reasons they don't feel like they're phoning it in. One, they had good material. True. Two, they brought those people in to a franchise that 
was very well loved and respected. So even if they felt like it was silly, they had faith that when this is assembled, no pun intended, <laughs> it, it will it will be okay. And so yeah. they they I think it's easier to commit to some of the sillier aspects of a superhero movie when you you've seen what this franchise has produced thus far and you've seen that it's been really good and even if it's not your thing it's been very well received oh even glenn know? close that was the last thing glenn yeah. close and guardians of the galaxy like that's that's a crazy person to get in one of these movies yeah yeah, it's I mean, they, like such a, a cameo, though. I mean, she's not do it. She doesn't even have a chance to really do it. Oh, I think she's going to be the world mind, but that's that's a whole no. But but in that movie, I just mean she. They didn't bring her in, and she's like a major no, part. No, sure, she's sure, sure. They keep cutting back to her, and, and and also how ridiculous! You think the head of this company is in a helicopter going to some <laughs> ground assault? Like yeah. she would be nowhere near that. That's so stupid that they have her going along every single mission where there's guns and stuff involved. Like it's she it's, look Kevin. And she she's been to leadership trainings. She knows that uh, the, the the ground crew, the grunts, need to see the boss's boots on the ground. To she's know a girl that, boss. That she, they that they should be invested in this thing as much as she is. If she's uh, there, that's why. The morale Ash, for morale. Yeah, right. The the one thing that I I do appreciate about this movie is a I absolutely agree about Jaime. I think he's fantastic. I think that suit is outstanding. I the agree. Look of the suit is fantastic. Yes. I was going to say in my list of good things about this movie, <laughs> mm-hmm. the fact that that suit is largely practical. Yes. I, I love, although I will say uh, that might be some of the Power Rangers vibe that you're getting. That's fair. You know? But it's not just the look of the suit, though. No, I mean, the silliness of it, right? Like, you know how silly Power Rangers can get, and it's hokey. And the vibe of the film, like, plot-wise, I think, it wasn't necessarily just the look of the suits or anything. But I I wish I could pinpoint it better. But there were certain scenes where it just it, it had this goofball feel, and it was really tonally mismatched, where in a TV show like Power Rangers, a kid's Saturday morning TV show or whatever, you you just... You excuse it, where in this movie, the drama beats are really good, but you get this really dramatic stuff, and then you get this really silly stuff, and it, it to me, it didn't mesh very well, and I think they could have done a better job. And also, I think it's because they're trying to cram in a lot of Silver Age stuff. There's a lot. The I, fact, I, the I, fact I that they reference not only the, the Golden Age Blue Beetle, but they get the, the connection between Dan yeah. Garrett and Ted Cord right yeah, is like I I was sitting there in the theater, and as soon as they said that Ted Cord's mentor originally had the scarab, I was like, "Holy shit!" Like that is blue. Okay, so Ted Cord is low key one of my favorite characters. He's like, low key. What I thought no, that was no, a Marvel that's thing. The other I'm guy. Confused. First sorry, sorry. over. Yeah. He's all. I've always loved that suit. I think the suit is like quintessential Silver Age DC Comics. He's not Batman, but he is like the billionaire vigilante, but he's dumber than Batman and not as good as Batman. So he's just always kind of had that every man quality. That, I love that though. I, that I, I think I it's love, that's why. Yes. And, and I'm sad. I, I hope they do bring him back because I love the idea. It's, of, it's of gotta a, be Patrick Wilson, right? <laughs> the tick. I mean, cause you know, he's look, would look just like, no, him. he played. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking Patrick Warburton. No, I'm sorry. no. Patrick Wilson played Blue Beetle in Watchmen. Night Owl right. 2 is a, is Blue Beetle. Like, that's who I it's mean, supposed the, to be. The, sh- the ship even looks the same. Like, it when, that, right. ship, exactly the when same. that ship takes off, I was like, oh, it's Watchmen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah the, the, Which is like, that's Alan Moore doing a commentary on well, those you DC know, characters. No, right? no, 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 no. They were Char- Charlton characters. The, the, the original game. people that he wanted to use, DC had bought Charlton Comics. Yeah. So, Peacemaker... Blue Beetle, The Question, Nightshade, and Captain Atom were all these characters that DC had just had sitting there and weren't doing anything with. So Alan Moore said, give me those characters, and I'll do something with them. And he, he said, no. And he said, okay, I'll just take everything about those characters down to the letter and just change their names. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm what, saying. What like he he's, <laughs> he's using them all as these archetypes. They're the same characters. They're just yes. made up names, and so he's basing so much of their likeness and appearance are virtually the exact it's same. The exact same. But I I really would love the idea of seeing that, and and I get that like this is the modern 
Blue Beetle, and I, I totally understand the representation, so I love it. But I, I like the idea of Ted Cord coming in and being able to see that goofy, like like you said, like Bruce Wayne Batman that it has goofy inventions and isn't as good as Batman. Yeah. Because I think in the comics that makes for a lot of fun to have all these things. And that was honestly at the end of the movie when the family starts pulling out these different inventions. I'm like, this is fun. I like I, when, I like this. And the, you know, I think we it, it, we should kind of mention the the line that got everybody into tizzy about Batman being a fascist. It's like it in context is great. That's exactly it. The context, even out of context, that joke is fine. I felt like it worked in the context of the trailer. Even the trailer established that George Lopez was a conspiracy yeah, theory nut job. Anti government like, and all this. Yeah, yeah, like there was, like there was, that was just people wanting to be mad, and there are people who want to be mad about Can't this wait. movie. Like I like and and like want to be mad about this movie and want to be mad on behalf of this movie. Like I Variety posted a thing about the how bad the box office is. In the yeah. comments, I posted a picture of my theater and I was like <laughs> 10 minutes before and it's the picture I sent you guys where yeah. there's literally like one person. Yeah. And like some people were like, "Oh, that's a shit." And I I wasn't like f this movie. I was just like, "This is my theater 10 minutes before showtime." on a Friday night at 7 p.m. Right like, yeah. And And I got to tell you, I haven't been to a theater on a Friday night in probably 25 years. And oh, so, dang. Okay. And so I honestly thought, even on a, on a movie that I knew was going to have a soft opening, that it would still be somewhat crowded. Sure. Because right. it's a Friday night at 7, and, and, like, there, and there ended up being, like, four other people in the theater. And, like, most people understood what i was getting at that you know but some people like were so mad at me and they're like well 10 minutes people have reserved seats they don't show up until oh three seconds before God. the movie starts and i was like yes there are people who do that but it's not 98 percent of the attendees <laughs> like sure. that's that's not a thing yeah, I, it, it, it's the internet yeah. is just ridiculous yeah. everyone wants to argue everyone wants to be mad this movie has nothing to be mad about again it's not the representation is an issue i, I think the cast is good. I think I enjoyed those aspects a lot, but the script should have been a lot stronger. It's just not that interesting, unfortunately. I do like the character. I hope he becomes back. We should say real quick, so we kind of touched on the origin story. We should say, like, Jaime is he's a college graduate. He comes back home. He finds out that well, and this movie's trying to do a lot too, right? So like Cord is yeah. Cord is trying to do military stuff, scientific research. They're landlords. Like I well, no, you know, I don't think it, they're. I think from. So, no, they're they're landlords because they own the house that they live in. And oh, so, I thought they were doing you, like a public domain thing where they were and trying. It, no, to like no, oh, they're raising the rent. Got yeah, it. Yeah, and got if it. you if you look in the background on these scenes, almost everything has like a cord yeah. realty sure, sure, sure. sign on it. So like, no, they they've ended up acquiring lots of real estate that I guess they've been renting out. Because they didn't have a need for it, and now that their plans are expanding, they're trying to take. They're going to start booting people and taking. Okay, it back. okay. But I think so. I think this movie has a lot of good things to say, but it's trying to spread itself so thin because you have the gentrification, you have the you know racism and ethnicity stuff with with the workforce and all that, and then obviously you have this family drama at Cord industries or whatever going on where you've got jenny cord who is ted cord's daughter ted cord disappears and she is trying to kind of fight the company back from her aunt who, who played by susan sarandon who is now trying to invest the resources in military operations where that is not what the company was founded upon no i and think so you no, it was founded upon that but when ted took over he pulled the tony stark and was like we're done with it and then as soon as ted went missing Susan Sarandon's character came back in and was like, nope, we're going back to the military stuff. We're going back. You know, she the f again, there are moments in these comic book movies where they bring in concepts and characters that I just never thought in a million years I would see brought to the big screen. And as soon as they mention OMAC. It's like Jesus. That is so Legends I, of the I, Hidden Temple. That's exactly right. Isn't that what the guy's name the, was? As soon as I, I heard it was OMAC. That. Okay, but, but I'm either like, way, that big statue yes, head to start yes, talking, which is also what I thought it was my... funny because it's like one man army corps, and then they're like, "We have thousands of suits," and I was like, "Well, that's not, it's not really Defeats one man the purpose. army corps then." But oh, go on, but go it's, on with your presentation. Their own, they're each their own army corps. Yeah. It, it is bonkers that OMAC is like because so the thing in 
in the I think it was it was one of the crises. Like OMAC is a is a massive OMAC and Ted Cord are two like massive parts of this entire story to where spoilers for I think it was Identity no Infinite Crisis. Ted Cord gets shot in the face and gets killed because he's figured this thing out about OMAC and all those different characters. So the fact that they introduce this this concept is like I appreciate that you're digging deep, you know, like it's it's not Batman versus Superman. It's like you're you're digging to the D and C level DC characters, which aren't as strong as the Marvel ones. Like the, <laughs> well, that bench is pretty. They, but they but they can really do a lot with these characters. If we've seen, I mean, James Gunn chose Peacemaker. He's in the exact same category. Absolutely, as Blue Beetle. I would right? put. I know. I and, would put him even lower. But I agree. Okay. But yeah. They came together, you know, like they're part of the same development era and everything. And I think that if if he can take Peacemaker and make that as solid as it is, like that is one of the best superhero things I've seen in a long time. And if he can do that, they can do it with Blue Beetle. So we can't really, you know, it's not like we can be like, oh, well, these are lower characters or whatever. I, I think if mm-hmm. anything, that should give you more freedom because... Yes people are less invested in these characters like if you start mucking around with batman everybody loses their but if you but if you change blue beetles origin like nobody's gonna care there'll be two nerds that'll be all upset (laughs) and but beyond that like because i mean i know from when i worked at the comic book store we would order 150 200 copies of detective comics or man of steel blue beetle we'd order three right 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 one, two, three. And <laughs> yeah. like and at the end of the month, as I'm debating what gets moved into the back issue bins, typically we'd have two left. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, like nobody cares about Blue Beetle. Right. And not, this was their not in the aggregate. Well, I will say, know? I will say like I, Guardians, they could care about him as they the could, thing, right? And they and did. Yes. With Blue Beetle though, he to me he's kind of like John the Green Lantern John Stewart. That character became like a focal point on Young Justice. I think on like the first two seasons of Young Justice. Season two. Is it season two? Mm-hmm. Is like he is like the he's the main I think the first episode might be about him. It's one of the early season two. But it's like other episode. other scarabs coming like the 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 team has to fight like other yeah. scarabs. So I, I do think that there is a whole generation of people that I don't know I, I like that show a lot. I don't know how many people watch that show. Yeah, it's decent. But I do think that there's a lot of people that probably recognize that character. And they I feel like they nail it. I feel like they don't ex- they don't have to explain the scarab is from space. Thank you very much. Like that's all we're we're not going to tell you where it came from or anything, you know. But But it is in the comics. Oh no no I'm fine like but they don't yeah. like delve into they they don't give you another twenty oh, minutes d- yeah no that's great that's know. great that they just said oh it's alien Arctic but yeah I do think that there this is the char- I'm glad that the character is there it's a shame that he got such a Begone? movie around him right yeah. like I think I again I think the the suit looks fan to the point where I bought the McFarland figure. Because mm. this, I think the suit does look fantastic. Yeah, I, suit's good. I think that transformation sequence is literally something out of a horror movie. That the transformation sequence is the highlight of the film. It's very cool. It looks good. I, I think they spent all the money on that. <laughs> you know, like the ending scene, they go to space basically. Like you're just like, oh, they it's just su- took everything. It's super dark in like a they, in like a field. They flew out of the cord secret headquarter or whatever research lab into the dark of night <laughs> in the sky where it was just and then you just check out because it's like a bunch of the same, cg blobs going boom 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 yeah, and same thing uh, we see all uh, the time but real quick just just to breeze through it though so he's back from college they're losing their house he has to go get a crap job his sister brings him in he ends up getting fired because he defends jenny cord when susan saran and her aunt is like we're gonna put you in your place or whatever and the henchman goes up to her and you know he blurts out like hey she said leave me alone and <laughs> i do like he the, gets, susan Strand's like you're fired yeah he's like Row. he gets fired jenny cord leaves and she says hey come by the office we're gonna get you a job and so when he goes to the office to find her she has just stolen the scarab out of their research labs and she doesn't know what to do and so she hands him <laughs> the, the big belly box again with like that's a deep cut into the yeah. D, into dc lore like big belly burger is their mcdonald's 
and the yeah. you know I appreciate this is the first time in a film they put it in. It's is in the right? Arrowverse it's, stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. They use it a okay. lot in the TV stuff. One of my but, favorite gags is uh, there's a scene in a comic book where Wally West is like becoming the Flash. Like he's new at being the Flash. The, and he has to eat all the food. He's well. He's like he had run <laughs> somewhere and he goes to Big Belly Burger with his friend and like the tray has like. 60 hamburgers yeah. on there and this guy's like how do you eat these like i gotta carb up and he's just like oh plowing. was that him and chunk it, i think it was him and chunk and and he i i even remember where he was running to because i thought it was so cool he in those early issues in order to make money yes like he would deliver organs for transplant yes and so he the hospitals would pay him to be like get this kidney to Omaha, and he was smart on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then he, when he'd get done, he was super hungry, and right? So, and he yeah, was like, yeah, just destroying big belly burgers. Yeah, like nobody's business. Those early flash issues were so, so cool. Good. The 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 things that they thought of in terms of like how he would use this to make money in a positive way, right? And like the effects that the running would have on him, or you know, like it was there was so much cool thought into those sorts of details being. Being Mark used Mark Wade, baby. Was that Mark Wade back then? In those uh, early no, that ones? was I don't, that uh, was Loeb, Loeb's Miller, maybe. Yeah, I think it was. I think yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. So he takes the, he takes it home, and this is the, one of the parts that really frustrates me. I'm of two minds of the family thing. I love the familial relationship. I I love the idea of the movie being family centric. On the flip side, I think they made them too silly. He's going for a job interview to save their house, yeah. and they're all yeah. yelling and honking. It, it's too goofy. I mean, I, I get it in a little kids film, but this movie wants to be more sophisticated than that. But then they dumb the humor down to that goofiness, and it's like you guys guys are clueless he's trying to get a job he, and he's not going to elementary school like he's at right. this big you know what i mean it just frustrated it's a, me it's clearly like supposed to be a fortune 500 company yeah and the other problem with with the representation aspect is when you make their heritage front and center in the film and then you have them behave like that right it has a boomerang effect of almost feeling like a commentary on like how dumb Hispanics, which is cool. Which, well, I is, the not what the mo- which is not what the movie's trying to do, but it's hard not to read it that way. I'm just like, they wouldn't be this dumb. But like, also, the, when George Lopez pulls up in that truck for the first time, and La Cucaracha plays when he pulls up, and I was like, that seems a little. But on the nose, but like it's that. written. It's written by sure. a Hispanic writer. It's That's what I'm saying. By yeah. Hispanic, so right, it's right, weird. Yeah. They're like they're obviously embracing the culture. And again, I enjoyed seeing a lot of those aspects. But but when they behave that way, like you said, and they basically almost ruin his job opportunities because they're being so silly. It's like that's not funny to me. To me, I was stressed for Jaime. I'm like right. he's yeah. trying to see, you know what I mean. And I I don't know. And I get what they're doing. Again, it's the silliness and trying to add humor. And then also balancing the family stuff, but it's too much. It's just and too much. You know, we've we've talked about this before from a representation standpoint. That like when you don't get a lot of representation, and you see a scene like the one we talked yeah. about, it feels like a commentary, even if it's not. It's so yeah. it's like when we saw what was the the Netflix movie with the, I. St- the, I know exactly. I what you're care. About. I care about. I, you oh, I care a lot. I care, I care a lot. lot. I care yeah. a lot. And the. You know, the main character was just a complete sociopath who's also a lesbian. We've seen enough lesbian characters in movies, and it didn't feel like a commentary about lesbians. Like, oh, oh sure. trust them, this is what they'll do. Where if that movie had come out 20 years ago, it would have been like, how can you make this story about lesbians? This is what you think of the of, of lesbian people. Right. You're hateful. And, like, that movie got none of that because, well, it's not a perfect world by a long shot it's gotten much better and and because we don't get as much hispanic and latino representation in films that like yeah a scene like this can really feel off-putting even if that's not their intention and that clearly it wasn't and, no. and and then so go from that scene he takes the, the scarab home and then again this is for a job interview with Cord Industries one of the biggest companies and it they is. own their house and all this but but then they're like t- uh, he's like she told me not to open it his boss for this job interview don't open it <laughs> they take it like, out like it. start <laughs> juggling it around and stuff and again I'm like this is so careless and they're acting so goofy about it and it's like this kid is trying to get a job and the owner of the company 
he said to do this one task, they're ruining his opportunities, and it's just <laughs> it's, frustrating it, for it, me. It, the way you're describing it makes me think of Rose Byrne in Insidious 5, where it's just like, you you did this <laughs> like just tell him like just yeah. fi- you know you 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 div- you you made him forget everything and then you divorced him because you didn't like how he turned out because you messed around with his brain and now he's sad sack billy but yeah, it, the family was the same way and it is it, but to that point though kevin is it does have that weird goofy tone and sometimes that works right like you sometimes you get those weird goofy tones and you throw some horror Right, you know, and you don't yeah. expect it. You don't see it coming. And I know I've talked about it a bunch, but if you take a five-year-old to see this movie and this transformation sequence happens, yeah. that kid's gonna They're be gonna be terrified. Joe. They're yes. gonna be scared for life. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for life. And because it is, it's it's so well done. But it is. I mean, it, this thing's like, you know, I do like where he's like, it crawled in his butt. He's like, it didn't crawl in my butt, <laughs> but it like it's breaking out of his skin and it's tearing him up, up on the back but, like it's kind of but you know what if the sister is a goofball which she is and i think she's way too over the top where it got to be annoying but if the sister's doing that i get it if george lopez the kooky uncle's doing it i get it but when his dad and his mom who yeah. seem to be the adults of the adults right. are like yeah do it I mean, <laughs> it's just like his dad wouldn't do that they're not the, the characters are not supposed to be that immature and i thought that that was wearing how you know how they kept encouraging this type of behavior when they should know our son is trying to get this job and help us so you know what i mean the writing did not match the situation to me and they did that throughout the film now i i like goofiness in other parts i do think at the end you know where it gets the attacks and stuff you know i thought it was fun and the family was together that, that, it worked well that beetle thing felt like something out of a james gunn movie yeah, the whole thing with like the the kickstart well, my heart, and then yeah, where I was thinking know, Watchmen, I really did think of Watchmen. When I, I mean, it's hard not to that the you owl, know? like whatever it's, because it's the yeah. exact same thing. Yeah, you know. But they basically what happens is Susan Sarandon is trying to track down the scarab, and and he gets into trouble when he goes back to find Jenny. She's running away out of the place, and he's like, "Oh, Jenny!" And then all of a sudden, all these guys with guns come after them and start shooting up. He's taking his uncle's beloved truck, and they're shooting it up. I did kind of like the running gag that the truck kept getting more and more <laughs> destroyed throughout the movie. Like that's a fun gag. But he pulled, the family gets pulled into it, right? So he's trying to figure this thing out. He wants to know how the hell do I get the scarab off of me this is given his powers he like it transforms his body like the suit comes like overtakes him it's kind of like iron man 3 like that's how i would describe it it's got like that liquid yeah you know if you've ever seen the giver which is kind of like this it was an anime for a long time they made a live action movie out of it that has like some of the best makeup effects you're gonna see in a movie with that low of a budget like everything in the movie from the suit the suit the Giver suit looks almost identical to this, or vice versa. But they've got like monster effects, like practical monster effects that are. They turn Mark Hamill into a cockroach. That's right, a He's giant actually, uh, cockroach. What I so what I really enjoyed about this movie is once they go to Ted Cord's house and it's like, well, oh yeah, first of all, those flamingos. Did anyone else notice how <laughs> terrible the CG was on those flamingos that flew away from Ted Cord's house? Oh mansion? no, no I, I didn't even did. notice oh, them. Oh my gosh, they set it up and these flamingos are standing there and walk away. It looked like something out of a PlayStation One cutscene. <laughs> it was so bad. But what was fun and what made me think how fun a movie could be set in this time period again. I'm not opposed to this being the modern Blue Beetle or anything, but when you go to his house and you see all the gadgets and it's kind of run down and felt like an 80s mansion, I'm like, man, this would be so fun to get a Blue Beetle set in the, in the appropriate, or, you know, the 80s time period when oh, this version great. of the comic was. But they go there to basically, she's like, I know where to take us. Jenny brings him to her dad's house and he's basically has a bat cave, which is where you get that George Lopez scene where he says Batman's a fascist and all right. that. But they're trying to discover in the computer system because George Lopez is a town Talented the, he's, the, and... he's the Hispanic Doc Brown, which I which is what somebody calls him in the movie. <laughs> and I was like, that's pretty spot that's on. <laughs> like, that's pretty good. But he's going through, you know, he's the only one that can go through Ted's computer and he's finding out all this information. He says, you know, I've got good news. 
I know how to remove it. I've got bad news. You have to be dead. And that was kind of a funny moment where he's like, this thing is, it's a symbiote basically, or it's, it's, it's yeah. basically trying to become one with you. And by now removing it because it's protecting your brain and everything. If you try to remove it, you die. And so he's basically like, we're stuck with this thing. And so meanwhile, while they're there, I believe jumping ahead, they go and try to attack the parents while no, they're they at the do, house. Like cord industries. It is, it is funny though, just to touch on that real quick is, yeah. so Jaime is wearing like it, He's wearing a Gotham University sweatshirt, so mm-hmm. which means that he probably went to Gotham to go to school. Which, if we know anything about these DC movies, it's just across the bay. Like they're just <laughs> they're all together. So it's from right Texas, there. yeah, right. <laughs> I, hey man, I, uh, I don't know anything, but they don't mention Queen Industries, which I think is interesting. Mm-hmm. Like there's no mention of all you know. They they talk about Bruce Wayne and Batman's a fascist, but there's no mention of the other guy who's mm-hmm. a billionaire vigilante who is definitely not a fascist. Like, he is the exact opposite <laughs> yeah, of like, fascist. Yeah, like, Oliver Queen is, like, <laughs> super left-wing. Yeah. Very much so. And he's one of my favorites. He's great. Yeah. But I do find it funny that Oliver Queen is never mentioned. If you're going to talk about te- the three tech guys, the three guys who are billionaire philanthropists, but you never mention the other one? I think they're just still waiting to figure out. I mean, this was made at a time before things kind of got shaken up so much. And I think they're waiting. You know, he was only in the TV universe at that point in time. And I think they're waiting for a moment to plant those seeds when they know that it's going to pay off very soon or, you know, a setup. And they didn't know what they were going to do. I will say I enjoyed the fact that they weren't cramming a bunch of cameos. And I agree with you there, too. Yet another scene of Wonder Woman standing, talking (laughs) with no one else standing next to her. Yeah. Where was her scene where she comes in and just shows up? So good. (laughs) But they attack the family looking for Jaime. He's not there, but they attack him. He's like, I got to go. And he finds out the suit. He, He can't really summon it, but it's there to protect him. So when he then runs and jumps off the balcony of this mansion, they're up top talking it it appears and he ends up jetting over there they did they did your trope which one was it where they were going to kiss and then george lopez walks in and then they don't kiss frustrating (laughs) i thought about you as soon as that happened and at least in that movie's in this that scene's defense like they had to go like yeah that which was fine but i as soon as that happened i was like oh man kevin <laughs> so, is losing his mind right now so played <laughs> out but but anyway so he goes there meanwhile they're just these guys troops are storming in they're the family's all trying to hide in a room they take them out and they have them with like laser pointed <laughs> guns at them dead to rights jaime shows up starts kicking some ass but this is insane to me is that a private corporation Right, can a- do this. Attacks kind of- a family, burns their house down, and then kills the father. Like, well, they, I'm sure he has they, a heart attack. But he has a he has a heart attack because he got socked in I the know. face but with a gun. Good luck, good luck fighting that against high paid <laughs> lawyers. You know what I mean? Uh, I was like, oh, if we're gonna do an evil corporation, we're just gonna double down on as yeah. evil as we can make them. Well, the court the court soldier. Remember when he first picks up Jenny in the truck? The court soldiers are coming after them with with rifles, shooting the truck on the main street, just like, out in the open. Like I'm like, what kind of jurisdiction does this court corporation have? And, and and never, never do the cops show up in this movie. Well, I think that they've said that the the guys that we're seeing are the cops. I think George Lopez does have a line where he's like, they own the cops as well. So, I mean, I think he meant that, and maybe that's a throwaway line to explain it. But come on, with this much destruction, I don't disagree. guns, <laughs> houses exploding, the cops aren't driving by. We do not see them once in this movie. It is so crazy that like, they don't nah. show up. But yeah, but the dad dies. And I will say, though, for as much as I had a problem with the writing of the family, some of the family stuff really works, especially with Jaime and his dad. Mm -hmm. And I teared up multiple times this movie. I think they got the emotional beats right in this movie. I think that scene where Jaime is in quote unquote heaven or wherever he's at and he has that, you know, then he has the realization that his dad is dead. I think that was really powerful. Which I think is another really good cultural thing, right? Like Dia de los Muertos. You see, like, you know, the family crossing over, and that's what that celebration is about. And it looked a lot like Coco. Like just well, and, all, all well, the candles in the background and everything like that, like the way that right, was like, like that's what I'm saying. So I think for them to bring in that culture, I really appreciated I seeing thought he that. Had died and gone to a Guns N' Roses video, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and, and you know, and, and and you know, it was a nice moment. I just I think those emotional beats worked really well. Like when the dad died, even though I was like these characters are really annoying, Kevin was, was like, getting, "Kill them all." 
No, but no, but I, but I teared up where I'm like, why am I doing this? They're so annoying, well, but I, I think, care. I think you the, know? Sister, like, the just... sister delivers one hell of a performance right there when she's trying to, you know, when yeah. the dad goes down and she's trying to revive him and they and they've him... torn away. They've they've Jaime is like being electrocuted and his powers are debilitated. And so you see them like all screaming and yelling and reaching for each other. And it's a really emotional moment. Yeah. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was. I, there, you're right. I think there are some beats that are. And I like that line from the grandma where she's like, I think it's at the very end when everything is taken care of and they're, the Reyes is, are standing in a circle and she says, like, and now we cry. I thought that was really that good. Was, like, that's that was a really, really good line delivery. I thought that was really impressive. So to me, this is really where the movie picks up. So now they have. You know, Blue Beetle is in their research lab. Susan Sarandon wants to basically decode the alien technology and put it into the OMAX so he becomes super powerful and it will also power all the other little OMAX in the lab. Meanwhile, the family is like alluding to what Joe said that's going to come later. They're like, right now we don't cry. We need to save Jaime. And so they they stand up and they, they go to Jenny's like, I think I know what can help. And she she opens up like this locker of <laughs> all like the Blue Beetle garbage crazy. <laughs> Gadgets. technology right um, the power I, the, the power, power glove, glove. <laughs> the sister wears a power glove and i'm thinking like a lot of kids are gonna have no idea what that is but i have one of those things still from you the still, nes days. Do you really i still have it That's yeah they're funny. worth like 300 dollars now they're so crazy rare but but i appreciate it and there's a lot of video game references i wrote some of them down get uh, over here <laughs> that was get a good one yeah, from mortal yeah, combat yeah. the the guns that he has are basically like buster blasters from Mega Man. yeah and he's blue yeah. so i thought that was a, you know very he fitting out a sword from final fantasy doesn't he that sword final is crazy Th- the buster sword cloud sword from final fantasy 7 that sword definitely looks like that and in in this version of the blue beetle it's very much like green lantern where he yeah. Anything he imagines, right. he can make. And so I think so, it makes sense that totally. a kid would make the sword from Final Fantasy. <laughs> right. And so I thought those were really fun. I also appreciated the movie references. When they go down into a cave, to, like in the research lab, they land on a skull, which was very Terminator reminiscent. Mm-hmm. Uh, there there can be only one Highlander mm-hmm. reference. There was another Terminator reference, and I can't remember what it was. But clearly, the writer's a fan of movies and video games, and I appreciated all those little references. But the family steps up. They get all the, the kooky weapons. I, I, this is what I think sets the movie apart, is instead of other superheroes coming and saving the day, we have your everyman family, including grandmas, yeah. stepping up, using goofy technology. George Lopez is piloting the bug, and they're going in there, and they are just taking out guards as, again, I think it's mixed messages. <laughs> when, when that, I, I, I was fine with, again, it's hard not to watch this, and not think Watchmen because the, yeah. the ship is almost it is identical. Right. But when it climbs up the wall and it steps on that guy, and I well, initially it's he's just knocking like the, he's they're using the legs to just knock guys out of the way. And yeah, I was which like, would okay, be fine. That's you're fine. Like, okay. I mean, and then in the real world steps, they're still paralyzed, sure, but yeah, in a right, movie right. you're like, okay, they're hitting him out of <laughs> right. the way. When he steps on that guy, and I was like, well, and then he. Like the the leg comes up through him. The dude is yes. The He's dude impaled. is still attached to the leg, and he just like kicks the guy off. And I was like, "Well, they just impaled that guy." All right, but you think that when the sister takes the power glove and punches the guy with that much force, like that guy is okay? Like, no, but they're they murdering also, people. They they do that blood splatter with not Sanchez. Like well, when there's that's, a yeah, giant one of the more violent things. Yeah. I was like, oh, like, but they're bad is, guys, Joe. That's the difference. That guy saying. wasn't a bad you know, guy. No, no, no. They are bad guys that killed him. That is the difference. We're talking about the family oh, is murdering see, people. I see, I see, I see. That Sanchez be... thing, scene, like, where they call him Sanchez, and then at the end, he's like, that's not my name. They've been calling him the wrong name the whole movie. Yeah. It irritated me that in the credits, he's listed as Sanchez. Is Sanchez. <laughs> he's listed as Sanchez. Yeah. So he was. Liar. But, but, <laughs> but, but we talk about this time and time again. The heroes have to be the ones that come above stuff. And we don't watch movies. And when the bad guys are doing bad stuff, we go, oh, yeah, the moral of the movie is they're saying do bad stuff. Like, that's the message that people get confused a lot. It's like they're villains. They do bad stuff. And the whole point is they shouldn't be. So I'm OK with them killing. It's terrible. Right. But that's why they're villains. But the family should be subduing people. They should be like, oh, this is set to stun. Like, give us some. Especially when Jaime goes out of his way to tell the scarab, do not kill them. Like, we're right. not we're not going to kill them. We're just going to stun them. And then the scarab. Once that you know the once Jaime and the Scarab finally sync up completely, yeah, the Scarab starts speaking in Spanish, which I thought was kind of fun. But even like when Jaime's gonna do, 
gonna, is going to kill the the bad guy. The scarab steps in and says, "His hey, rage is, is overtaken. They killed his dad, or got his dad killed. They're trying to kill his family. His house down. It's a really good moment because the dude would be pissed. And I like that the beetle is like, remember, we don't kill. Here's it's the really problem, cool. though. We hmm. just saw that in Spider Man. We just, well, we saw they, a lot of this. In I feel like we see does. a lot of the whole rage is taking me over. And well, sure. that's true, but I mean that the, that the whole thing where you know Peter's going to kill the Green Goblin and Peter sure. no, Peter one." steps in and stops him and then gets yeah you know that is very but that's why this whole movie is is full of these tropes the other thing is too this is too much iron man i'm done with the if you're in a robot suit you're iron man the heads up <laughs> oh oh that's what terminator is from the bar he the he's scanning the family like uh terminator oh, 2 sure, sure, sure. in the bar when he's scanning them for their sizes it's a heads up display just like that i can't, appreciated that can't let you leave with the man's bike so yeah <laughs> but but the the jarvis and the heads up display thing i just think it's too much iron man we've seen it so many times they've got got to figure out a different way to show a heads up I don't display. even I, yeah I don't mind the Jarvis part like I you know having a voice trying to you know walk you through things but I think yes and since 2008 when Iron Man this is what everybody does but if just do put it in a, a different suit, way you know how do you do it though but instead of like a Jarvis robot maybe just make them talk like a normal person because it's alien technology I don't know but it feels too much like Iron Man and I'm just kind actually of sick what of I it. would be fun is if when Jaime first gets the scarab, it's speaking an alien language. Yeah. And then as the movie progresses, as they sync up closer and closer, they're like, I am Groot. They, yes. Oh, <laughs> right? It is I am Groot. Yeah, never mind. That's all right. No, I got you. No, that, it, and, again, it syncs up with him. It speaks Spanish. Like yeah, right, yeah, right. Talking, That's what, Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> Which so makes total can... sense because, I mean, it's it's part of his brain now. And if right. he speaks Spanish, it would speak Spanish. Like, yes, I, exactly. I, I like that. So Although they, they all... should have gone full on greatest American hero and just not had a voice and have it like the so much of the greatest American hero was he gets this suit, but he has no instructions. And so he just has to do through trial and error, figure, figure out. out how to use it. I think it's just because in the comics they did it. So they're no, trying I to be it, faithful, yeah. which is cool. And again, hats off to them for doing their research, incorporating yeah. the oh, Silver yeah. Age stuff and the, the new comics. I think they did a really good job with that. But yeah, the the family's kicking ass. It's fun to watch. I mean, again, I don't think they should do as much killing, but the fact that it's a family stepping up and using silly inventions. Jenny Cord is up in the helicopter now. Susan Sarandon has abducted her up in the helicopter. She brings the gum, which is one of Ted Cord's inventions. Choose it. Terrible CG. But That's a real, fun, it, it looks like the 1950s I mean, it's, blob. Like it's very real bad, bad. <laughs> but but it's a fun concept where the bubble gum is expanding and they end up bouncing out of the helicopter. They crash land and Susan Sarandon basically has her. The bad guy is fighting Blue Beetle. I got to tell you, I thought the entire time when they keep referencing, obviously, we they keep referencing Ted Cord. So we know that there's going to be he's going to show. Oh, yeah, up you know, he's point. not dead because they said he disappeared. So I he's, thought I thought yeah. the gum was like a tracking device. Oh, that was like going to because she's like he she says that that's something my dad made for me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's going to be like, that's the trigger. Like, that's the thing that's going to bring Ted Cord back. And gotcha. You know, but I think it was just like a protection for his little kid, you know, because it was no, he's in the quantum realm, though, Joe. Oh, my God. (laughs) I mean, is it not like the same after credits of Ant-Man where what's her face is like, I'm stuck in the quantum. It's just I don't know. It's this movie feels so reductive, except uh, except Marvel actually would cast the role so you could get excited right. about who will play this character in the Correct. future. I know this one's all blurry. Like, <laughs> yeah. we don't know who this and there's is. no, it, it's, it's like, it's like generic white guy. Garble. Voice. Yeah. yeah. Garble. yeah. We, we haven't Garble. determined how much money we want to spend on this casting yet. So, right. Yeah. It's we gotta won't be Pat- you gotta get Patrick Wilson. Well, after the Red Door, maybe he'll be available. He will be. No, it made a ton of money for whatever reason. Of course reason, it did. So. It's a Blumhouse movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so they they we find out that Omac is he's gone full Omac. He's got all the powers. He's fighting Blue Beetle. He seems stronger than Blue Beetle. He's got him pretty much dead to rights. And it ends up that we get this flashback. Who saves him? Does George Lopez throw some rocks at him? He throws then... rocks at him, and then they. Ba- I think that. How do they stop oh, him? Oh, they oh, so he thinks that George Lopez is dead. Jaime thinks that his uncle that yeah. Uncle Rudy is He shoots killed. explosives at right. him. Right. And he snaps and he just starts tearing into Oh, and Jaime kicks his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jaime t- t- you know beats the shit out of him and then as he's about the to scarab. kill him, the scarab says, "While I was being drained from you, I Oh, they milked him. 
They milked him. They milked it. <laughs> That's I mean, exactly right. I'm seriously like, it's so weird how those things happen because they put him in a milking machine. Yes. Splinter was right. Everyone listened to Splinter. <laughs> and we basically find out that Cord Industry, again, this is just like Iron Man. Iron Man. I, with, I the, just, with Cord written on the, uh, on the missile. It's, Cord Industries killed this guy's mother. Susan Sarandon kind of adopted this guy and ripped him apart, tore his, you know, tore him to pieces. Hey, I guess to give him credit, though, just like in the long line of stealing from other comics, I mean, this is right in line. They just stole from I, a bunch of superhero that's movies. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that they're both companies are just bouncing yeah. each other's ideas off of each uh. other. And but that's he was, what it was he's a victim in all this. As yeah. a kid, Cord took him, brainwashed him, used him for all their war things, got him disfigured and, and, and arms blown off and replacing him with robot parts. And Susan Sarandon says the same thing she says about Jaime. She says if you know, if it kills him, then so be it. It's for the greater good. And so he the realizes greater good. Yeah, so he's been used and abused, and he ends up then standing up against her. And this is when he did does you, the okay. So did you think that like that they fuck off right i don't i couldn't tell honestly there was that like when she would get up in his face like that and that and sometimes you could say that it was like a motherly thing i think she was using it you know i i don't think they did but i think she was manipulating him but also he was a child well throughout the years i think uh uh-huh she found him as a child but i'm (laughs) saying that i think that he's obviously i mean how old do you think that guy is now 56 like he's older now so yeah that's true but and it was super weird. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> so anyway, he almost kills him. The suit stops him. But then the guy stands up and is like, yeah, I'm just going to go blow up. <laughs> Sarandon now. The suit goes, he's turned up his internal energy. We should run. We should run. <laughs> how about how about you should fly? Remember those flying powers? Yeah, you know you can fly, right? Yeah. Oh, and he does even like kind of a repulsor beam. Like yeah, like the, yes, yeah. The, his the, hand, his fingertips and his and his feet have like repulsor yeah. stuff on them. Yeah. So anyway, that's it. The it's, family. Yeah. They all survive, you know. Aside from the dad, the dad pass away. They have a big gathering and party where people bring food at the end, and then he gets a, he gets a smooch. Yeah, Jenny shows up and is like, "Hey, I got places to be," and he's like, "Let me give you a ride." And then <laughs> she the shows like, up looking like Sandy from Greece. She does. It's like scene. the end of, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like she's not dressed she's like never that been... at one point in the no, movie. No, she's, she's a biker always in all leather. <laughs> right. She's always been like very. Well, I don't even know how you describe it. Like fashionable. Yeah. Like business but, fashionable. And yeah. Now she's rocking like the... black leather pants and a leather jacket. The Blue Beetle thing is ba- the scarab is based like I've detected you have a boner. Essentially, is what that yeah. is the other. There were multiple when there when, is blood um, rushing to your midsection, which I think is a kind of a funny joke. But like the farting joke, did you did you hear this yeah. joke? It's just another I, kids movie terrible. thing. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I hated it. Well, I, yeah, um, with the scene where they're at the mansion and they're oh, they almost I get like, in the bed. When he gets up to leave, he's still, like pull his he's jacket hiding down. his erection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, we've all been there. I get it. <laughs> so yeah, so we'll see. And then post credit thing, the blue Ted cords alive in the quantum realm, and we'll Wherever see where that goes. goes. Tell yeah. my yeah. daughter I'm alive. So yeah, like that was and so cheesy. A, and there's a suit missing. Like that's the other thing is they keep referencing. Like if you look in the Beetle Cave or whatever the hell it's called, there's. Garrett's there's Dan Garrett's suit the original like golden age blue beetle suit there's the Ted Cord suit and then there's like a mannequin with nothing on it and I was like yeah. well, what the hell is that like it's probably what he's wearing it's what he's, he's gone using. oh yeah. I got yeah. yeah okay that's it for this one let's go around the table and everyone can say where to find him this is Joe you can follow me on the Twitter at Joey Butts B-U-T-T-S-21 also at Letterbox at the same this is Kevin. Follow me on Twitter at Kevin R. Brackett. And this is Tom. Follow me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. Find the show online at Facebook.com slash Real Spoilers. And, of course, don't forget our Patreon. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, Paul's grandfather upsets the producer. Get ready for a spoiler. Won't say it twice because we already warned you.